So now we're going to cover the traditional pellet stove annual service and maintenance. What is frequently required is the customer will call and say my pellet stove isn't operating correctly or it's just time for annual cleaning. So a lot of uh, chimney sweeps will simply clean the venting, which is great. We want to all absolutely clean the venting, but it's really the last of four things we do on a pellet stove. There are four things we always do on a pellet stove. We clean the combustion blower, the convection blower, the ash traps, and last but not least, the vent. So let's take a look here. This is a Whitfield uh, pellet insert, and it has a uh, front door assembly that opens up. The burn pot is a common component. All of them have to have a place for the fire. The igniter is just behind it and feeds through a spot. So if you reinstall the burn pot backwards, their pellet stove will not light. A tiny ash drawer. In this case, we have these little lift out panels to also collect ash. And now let's look at the ash traps. The ash traps are on the lower left and right. These systems are designed for the flame to burn up, hit a series of air tubes, get drawn down the back side of this wall, and then run on the back side of this wall over to one corner and get propelled out the exhaust system. Pellet stoves always operate under negative pressure in the firebox. You'll notice there is a gasketed rope seal all the way around the door. That's not to prevent exhaust air from coming in the room, it's to prevent too much fresh room air from coming in and cheating and getting in the firebox. So we, when we clean, we have to clean not only this compartment with a dry paintbrush, but we also have to clean back behind these compartment areas. And if you'll look closely, every make and model has some type of um, access. And you can see there's some debris in there. On this side, there's some debris in here, undoubtedly. Uh, right back here as well. And so what you'll do is take a vacuum hose and vacuum that out. And that'll be important for the cleaning process on this unit. And then of course put everything back in and test fire the unit. The, the older pellet stoves are uh, sometimes easier to clean on, uh, easier to work on, but not uh, necessarily easier to clean. Let's look at the back side. Remember there are four components we have to clean. The first is the combustion blower. So looking around here on this side, this is the combustion blower. It is attached with about five 11 30 seconds nuts and they just spin off so you'll use a tiny socket set and remove these and this blower will come off and just set up a little area and dust it off with your dry paintbrush and your vacuum. The exhaust contents are propelled into a T and out. Here's our representative T. In the case of an installation in a firebox, this is an insert. It'll look something like this going up through the old factory built fireplace or the old masonry fireplace and this vent will go up and out to the top of the chimney. So you will need to remove the T cap and then run your brush up and down, or sometimes you have to physically disconnect the tea from the appliance in order to get the ash and soot out. So if you sweep it from the top down, it's gonna build up with ash and soot clear up to here. You've gotta get back in here and vacuum it out. Sometimes when this is off, you can access it and suck the tea out as well if it's a really challenging one. A lot of the quadrifiers come with a top exhaust. So instead of a horizontal, they have a vertical and that makes it a lot easier and they have a built-in ash trap. Again, this is the combustion blower. Right here, this red tube is going to the vacuum switch, which is an electronic switch, which senses the amount of pressure that is being developed going out the exhaust. And if there's too much back pressure, the vacuum switch cannot close, and therefore it shuts power off to the auger motor. So every once in a while, we'll find that we need to blow through the tube to get a little piece of debris out, and then reconnect it to the vacuum switch. Don't pull it off the other way and blow into the vacuum switch. It's a very sensitive diaphragm. You might, you might hurt something. The older models had a uh, damper rod here. This one seized up with a little bit of rust, I think, but uh, this will basically to the left is usually open. 
and it's basically a shutter like this, and it will shut or open the exhaust, and that's how we regulate what the fire looks like on the inside. <clears throat> the next blower is the convection blower or the room air blower, and it's gonna blow air over the heat exchanger and into the room. So the way these heat a house is room air comes in the back, goes all through this compartment, gets sucked into this opening right here, and then it gets pressurized and pushed out the front air grill. And we need to just reach in there and make sure there's no debris and stuff. Look, I found some lint in here. So you just need to suck that out and clean that out. That's the convection room air blower. Up in here, how these pellet stoves work is they have a hopper. The hopper opens up and this is usually where the label is. So if you have a defective or broken stove and you need to find a new auger motor, combustion blower, convection blower, snap disc, anything, you will need to have the make and model. And, and it's usually accessible inside the hopper. For some reason they do that on pellet stoves. Oftentimes there is a little handle up here on pellet stoves that goes up and down or in and out. And what it does is it scrapes and it cleans the heat exchanger tubes on the inside. So flame heats the tube from the bottom and the room air blows air through the tube and that's how they heat. So this is a basic intro to an older style Whitfield pellet insert. This pellet stove is the Quadrifier CB1200. It's a freestanding Quadrifier pellet stove, about four to five years old. Um, it has the same features that we're gonna go over on all brands when we're out in the field. It has a main hopper lid that opens up and then it has specifically just a pellet hopper lid here. The front door is accessible by swinging the right and left doors open. They're attached by magnets and a buckle mechanism. The buckle mechanism is an adjustable element, but rarely, if ever, will you have to adjust that. The door will swing open on a smooth hinge. There's a gasket all the way around the door, again, to prevent too much room air from coming in. Inside on the, on the fire pot or burn pot, the thermocouple right here is covered. It's a ceramic cover over a uh, metallic, sensor. It's basically a soldered tip on the end and this is what reads the temperature setting or the temperature of the burn pot to tell the circuit board whether there's a fire or not. So this is just a ceramic cover to make it last longer. Um, on the inside we have to clean the uh, ash traps and there's not much inside on this particular model. This lifts down it hangs on these little clips here, and you can see the heat exchange tubes inside. They hang on an angle, and they can be cleaned with the uh, ash rake right here. When these are activated, they clean the ashes, and they cause the ashes to fall down inside of a chamber back there and we have to find out where that is and suck it out. So when we're doing service on this unit, we need to make sure that we are, um, we got our vacuum going, our dry paintbrush, and we're vacuuming along. In the bottom is the ash drawer, which we can pull out. And uh, underneath we will find there is a plate where some of that ash will fall and collect that we need to gain access to. It's a couple of screws, take them off. Again, vacuum that area out. There are four parts of every pellet stove that need to be cleaned. The combustion blower, the convection blower, the ash trap, and last but not least, the vent. Let's identify where the combustion blower is on this unit by turning it around. You can see a back view here. This is our exhaust tube. So this is where the exhaust vent will connect. This unit will have to have a light bead of sealant. All pellet stoves have to have a little bit of sealant right on the exhaust because they're under positive pressure after the exhaust blower. Now we come around to the extreme left side. You can see some of the, this is the heat exchanger here where the convection blower blows the room air up and out. This is our con combustion blower down here.
And you can see that uh, when this turns, it propels the exhaust out and it's attached by six Phillips head screws down here. So we need to unattach those screws. The blower will come out and you'll notice there's like a fibrous gasket here that it forms the seal between the motor and the housing. And it's important that that seal be maintained. Upon completion of your cleaning, you're gonna reinstall it and frequently that gasket will wear out. It just uh, will fall apart even. So since we don't really carry those factory gaskets around, you can put a light bead of silicone sealant, high temp silicone sealant right around here, but it needs to be very, very thin. Uh, need to is like think in terms of paper thin, just enough to prevent gases from escaping under a little bit of pressure. If you put too much in there and squish it down, it'll make a big finger of silicone on the inside, the invisible side, and grab one of the fan blades and really foul things up. So that is the combustion blower. Need to gain access to that and clean it every time. These doors just attach with magnets. The, the convection blower, the convection blower is on this side and it's just visible here. These uh, fan blades, uh, when they turn, they propel room air getting sucked in here. They propel room air up on an angle and out and flame hits the bottom of that angle and it's very primitive, but flame heats a metal surface and then a fan blows air on the opposing side of that metal surface and that's your heat exchanger. There are various uh, snap discs in here to check for overheating, over temping, etc. One other thing I'd like to point out is there is a nifty little ash trap right here with four Phillips head screws. So when you're opening these units up to do the annual service, get to know them, Oh, get the owner's manual. If you don't have the owner's manual or can't find it, look for ports of access like this. They're usually not labeled, but you can open this up and look in there and you'll see a half inch or an inch of soot back there. Vacuum it out. That's your job. Take a dry paintbrush, brush it all down, etc. Over here is your control board and your uh, controls. So we'll go ahead and reassemble this and get it ready for use. First, I'll close the front door with the latching mechanism. And then we'll put the uh, ash drawer back in. And this, we have to open up the side panel and there's a buckle on the sides here. And a buckle here. That's the ash drawer. And then it looks like we got to put the interior panels back in. They're going to hang on the ceiling. And then the left hand panel. And they kind of drop in and down on an angle. Latching the front door. And then we'll close up our uh, side panels on the side. Now one last thing, when, when diagnosing a pellet stove, a lot of times customers will say, uh, my auger isn't turning. There's something wrong with my pellet stove. What's wrong? Can you guys please help me out? We always recommend that we start with an annual cleaning. And the reason is eight times out of 10 upon performance of an annual cleaning, all four components, four areas of the stove, the unit will start working. There are three, sometimes four safety switches dedicated to shutting off the auger motor if something isn't quite right with this appliance. So there's a snap disc. If there's a bird nest in the flue or too much soot, it will shut the auger motor off. If the unit has ever overheated uh, and it doesn't have a, an auto reset snap disc on the exhaust or on the feed tube, that will shut off and you have to go in there and find that and push the little button. Um, so there's several things, just those two right off. Also the hopper lid, if the hopper lid is left open now on modern pellet stoves, the auger motor will not feed. Uh, so remember when you're diagnosing it to shut all the doors, uh, etc. Definitely get the manual, go to the troubleshooting section and look at it, but this is just a quick intro on the Quadrifier 1200. Great, so we're gonna put one female adapter and one male adapter on each side. 
and that will uh, allow us the flexibility when we're testing components on the stove to check it out and see uh, in other words, this one multi-purpose tool will help us diagnose all kinds of different components. Okay, we would go ahead and wrap these with tape, but just for right now, we're going to go ahead and use our new tester. This is the Harman Advance pellet stove that has been stripped down for demonstration and teaching. All pellet stoves have to be cleaned in four areas, the combustion blower, the convection blower, ash traps, and last but not least, the vent. We're gonna cover a few other components on this one. These white wires on a Harman pellet system uh, control the igniter. So superheated air is what ignites the pellets and it burns along one of the rows of holes here. As you can see, the pellets are an upfeed auger system, which is unique with the Harman brand of pellet stove. The ash traps are accessible through the interior portion. There's a swing arm up top and it pulls out these panels. And then on the inside, there's a triangular uh, welded metal heat exchanger inside. So this is, the, this is where the heat exchange happens. This is where soot collects back up in here. Definitely need to access this every, uh, every few months and definitely when you come out for annual cleaning. Clinker will often build up on this and it needs to be scraped and cleaned. Let's take a look at the back. At first, this looks rather complicated, but we're gonna take it a piece, take it apart a piece at a time. Right down here, this is your combustion blower. It's actually mounted on the inside, bottom, rear. And it's accessible with a lever down here that lifts up, releases a plate here, and then if you can see on an angle, the actual blower is right here turning. So it's an easy access, no screws needed. You just uh, dust it off, clean that out thoroughly, and then reinstall the cover plate. This is your combustion blower. So it's gonna propel the exhaust contents out the exhaust, which is the main port right here. The convection blower is the other component we have to clean, and that's right here. And it's blowing air when this comes around. You can see that it blows air against the back wall up, and then it comes out on the heat exchanger up at the top. Right here is your heat exchanger. All this tri-folded metal is being uh, treated with heat, raw flame on this side, and then a blower is blowing the air across it. So it goes from room air cold to room air hot, and then it goes out in the room, cools, falls, comes back to the appliance, gets picked up, and that's a cycle that's separate from the combustion chamber. All of the combustion chamber air is welded separate from the convection room air. So that's just a very important thing to note. Okay, coming back here, this is our air inlet. All fire has to have an outlet and an inlet. And there's a little flapper in here that controls the air inlet. And you can see that it enters in several places, one along here, and then also through the feed tube. So uh, that's it provides fresh air up through there. I wanna point out right along here, you'll notice this small gap. There's a dark line of space and that is where fresh air comes through that tube in this welded chamber here and fresh air is drawn in. And what scientists have found is that where air moves, soot cannot stick. So it cleans the glass. It's basically a glass cleaning uh, service built into the stove and it's part of the combustion, combustion air. Well, now let's get some of the fun. Uh, get to some of the fun part, and that is testing the components. You'll notice that these components all have two wires, a black and a white. We're going to use our recently made uh, device here to simply plug in here, and we can run 110 volt electricity straight to these components and see if they turn on. And if they turn on, then we know the component is not defective. And that's a common question a customer will have during diagnosis. Just make sure your wires aren't touching anything else. This is the convection room air blower. And it is spinning very fast and blowing a lot of air out the top. So we've just confirmed the convection room air blower 
has nothing wrong with it. Next, we disconnect it for our safety, disconnect our leads, and move it over to the combustion blower. It doesn't matter which way you hook it up, it's polarity non-specific when you're testing these because uh, alternating current. We're going to plug it in. And that blower is spinning very fast and blowing a lot of air out this rear exhaust tube. I'm just getting a lot of air out of here. So our exhaust blower is functioning. Next, we're gonna test the auger motor, which is the most complained about component on pellet stoves. This is, this is why um, we're doing this segment is specifically because so many people complain about their auger motor not working, when in fact, nine times out of 10, usually it's not their auger motor, it's lack of cleaning. But if you are knee deep in a diagnostic and you're trying to determine, is it really the auger motor, you can use your newly made diagnostic wire to plug it in directly. Now you can notice that the gear mechanism is turning inside here. The shuttle plate is going back and forth and that's dropping pellets in and it's feeding pellets up into the uh, burn pot on the other side. Everything looks good here. We have just tested the auger motor. Let's take a look on the other side and just confirm for ourselves. Pellets are coming up. Yep, and it's pushing pellets up right now. And that's where there's a fire burning along the front and the flame comes up and hits a heat exchanger. Everything looks good on our test wire. So congratulations, we've just built a test lead and we have tested uh, three different components on this pellet stove and everything looks good. So that's a very helpful tool when you're diagnosing what's wrong with a pellet stove.